G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and welcome today to the National Vegetable Protected Cropping Centre at Western Sydney University where I'm finding out about a revolutionary new film that promises to engineer the light that we put into plants, not only increasing yield but changing all sorts of interesting growth characteristics. This is not your standard polyhouse film. In fact, it's polycarbonate and it contains a special pigment that can actually store light energy and release it in a different spectrum, allowing you to not only tailor the amount of photoactive light available to plants, but also change the way that they produce enzymes that change flavors of foods and create out of season goodness for growers. Let's find out a little bit more about this project and talk to Chris Wilkins, the Chief Operating Officer of LEAF, the company behind this remarkable film. G'day Chris, G'day how are you team. mate? Good thanks. Mate, thank you very much for having us out here today. It's a um, pleasure. It sounds like a pretty remarkable product that you guys have got up here, that you've got the researchers here testing. Yep, that's right. They're investigating how capsicum grow under leaf film compared to a control. Normal polyfilm, we'll start there. It yep. does some pretty remarkable things with light energy. It diffracts light energy and reduces the amount of shade and increases the photosynthetic capacity of plants by doing that. Yep. But there are some drawbacks, aren't there? Particularly when it comes to midsummer heat, and sunburn and various other things, aren't sure. they? Sure, so typical polyethylene film, great for keeping hail off plants, yep. keeping them a bit warmer. Yes. Uh, but what our film does, it goes well beyond that, where it actually absorbs green light, which is of low value to the plants, and emits additional red light, which is high value. That allows the plants to grow a lot faster inside the same greenhouse. So we have to step back and we have to understand our high school biology for a yep. moment. Plants are green because they reflect the light they don't use. That's correct? right. So plants are using the red and the blue spectrum or the ultraviolet spectrum yep. of sunlight. And what your film's doing is it's actually absorbing the light that they don't use, that green stuff in the middle, and it's storing it up. What does it do then? Yeah, it's actually able to selectively absorb green light, become charged up and then emit red light, just like if you put a red LED, a battery and a solar panel inside your greenhouse. So if I get say 10 units of sunlight onto a plant, it might only use eight units of sunlight because the two units are green. What you're trying to do is you're trying to harvest those extra two units and put them in the usable category so that it harvests 100% of the light. Yeah, the units are a bit different and the efficiencies are a bit different, but that's pretty much about right. The obvious advantage to this is going to be increased yield and production, isn't it? That's one of the advantages. Uh, we're also protecting the crops from too much sunlight, which can lead to crop loss. Uh, we're also shifting the seasonality, which allows growers to grow plants out of season, get out of season prices for their fruit, uh, and potentially protect plants from pest and disease. Well, I think we can, we can easily understand the first benefit, Yep. which is if we maximise the amount of sunlight, obviously we're going to maximise photosynthesis, provided the plant has enough carbon dioxide and water to photosynthesise. That's right, Tim. So everything should be optimised for a plant to grow as best it can. You yep. need a really good irrigation system, good nutrition, carbon dioxide, climate control, like you mentioned. But sunlight largely remains the unrefined input, and that's where we come in. So it sounds like your film is sort of acting like a solar panel and battery almost. Precisely, that's exactly how it's acting. So you're trying this out with all sorts of crops. At the moment, we've got some capsicums in here and yep. it's being trialled out against a control and also another, another type of plastic as well. That's right. And those results will obviously be carefully measured. But you have seen big results with lettuce crops in the past. What sort of results have you got with lettuce crops? That's right. So the researchers here at Western Sydney University observed a 14% increase in butterhead lettuce and yep. a 27% increase in green cost lettuce in the yield. Now that alone is a good selling point, isn't it? If That's you can increase, increase the yield yeah. of a square metre by 20%, you're going to make more money. Yes. But there are other benefits as well, aren't there? Now I've got a friend who grows hydroponic fruit and every summer he's got to spray his polyhouse with chalk because he has problems with heat mm -hmm. and he has problems with sunburn. You were telling me before that your film will also handle a lot of those problems as well. Yeah, so part of that process uh, of absorbing light is actually reducing the total amount of light. So the film provides a 30% shading effect. 
right. but it's also providing 10% more red light. So you get shading while you get increased growth rate side by side. So if I spray chalk over my grow house, yep. I'm reducing all light by 30%. That's right, it's a uniform shading across the spectrum. Both the good and the bad light is reduced. Whereas your film takes away about 20 to 30% of the light, mm -hmm. but it leaves the photoactive light unchanged. That's right, so it's spectrum selective shading, yep. but it's also then emitting additional red light from that wasted green light. And it's interesting to know, people think of sunlight being a constant thing, but sunlight fluctuates with cloud cover and all sorts of things. Your film has the capacity to also fluctuate in its behaviour in time with the sunlight. Yeah, so sunlight, even on a perfectly clear day, there can be clouds that we can't see, sunlight kind of flickers. Yep. Uh, growers realise that their yield very much depends on how much sunlight they get. Yes. What our film is doing is diffusing light. So you get nearly no shadows in yep. here. So yep. even those lower leaves can still get plenty of sunlight to grow and protect the top leaves from too much sunlight. Now there's also some really interesting research that you guys are across and that you're working in the space of, and that is that the different types of sunlight that plants are exposed to actually changes their biochemical behaviour, yep. and you can actually grow fruit out of season and completely out of context. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure, so plants have something called phytochromes. Yeah, phytochromes detect what season it is, and they tell the plant when they should or shouldn't flower and fruit. Yes. We can stimulate the phytochromes by increasing the amount of far red light using a special film with a special dye that then shifts from green light instead of red, we shift to far red, and then we can control the seasonality of the plant. And you can do all of that through your film. That's right. Having a great product is one thing, but getting reliable data to prove its performance in the marketplace is the obvious next step. Thankfully, we've got the premier site for doing these sorts of trials here at Western Sydney University. Let's go and talk now to Norbert and Sachin to find out about the work they're doing, proofing and trialling this product. Norbert, how are Hello, you, mate? How are you going, buddy? Good to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you, too. Now you're one of the expert plant handlers here. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about this setup and what you've got going on with this trial? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, we just planted a new lot of uh, capsicum crop in these yep. chambers. Uh, How together. many weeks have they been in now? Oh, they've been here probably about two, three weeks. Yep. Uh, plus whatever time they spend in the nursery. Yes. They came probably that height and this. So they've doubled the rest in height is just already. A new, new growth, almost doubled the, 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 the size. Yep. Uh, at this moment, we select, uh, try to select the two strongest stems. Yes. As you see on those plants, there is so many stems, up to five. Uh, our job is to select two strongest ones in yep. proper orientation, so it has this nice V shape as it grows towards to the top. Now you've got this pretty fancy film up above your head. Um, you've actually got two hothouse rooms that are covered by that film as That's well, right. and then you've got four others. That's right. Uh, two of those are a, a trial, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so how the science works, we always have to have our treatment. Yes. So in this case, our red film. Yes. Uh, and we have to compare it to a chamber that doesn't have it. So that's our control. So treatment, control, and then we compare the results from those two chambers. And have you seen any impressive results so far? Uh, from my point of view, I can observe that the plants in, in this chamber, they grow faster. Yep. A bit more bushy. Uh, I reckon the fruit develops faster and, and the leaf is bigger compared to our control. Well, Norbert, I'll let you get back to your work, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us out here. Nice to um, meet you. And I can tell you, it's a pretty impressive little crop of capsicum you got here. Very clean. No, you just wait till we have a crop, actually. <laughs> hey. All right, Thank mate. You, take care. Cheers. G'day Sachin, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now you're the postdoctoral research fellow that's investigating these light treatments on plant growth. Can you tell me a little bit about what the problems are with standard horticultural production that you're trying to overcome? We've been trying to reduce the energy in protected cropping because you might be aware that protected cropping has such an advantage of production, but at the same time it costs a lot of energy. Yes, because uh, we've got to keep things cool and we've got to pump water over them and use fans and all sorts of things. Exactly. So that's why we're trialing two types of films here. One is aimed at reducing the amount of radiation that's coming in. Which so is a blue film, is that correct? Yeah, that's a blue film. Yeah. It's a light blocking film. Yep. So the idea is to reduce the amount of heating so we can save on cooling. And at the same time, we're trying another film which actually boosts the photosynthesis and productivity by shifting the 
relatively less efficiently used green wavelengths to the red ones? So the blue film will probably be a little bit more familiar to people who have been used to greenhouse production in the past that have used things like chalk or shade cloth to try and drop light intensity down by 20 or 30 percent because that's basically what the blue film is going to do for them. But this red film is a little bit more interesting, isn't it? It's actually engineering the light, it's actually taking some of the spectrum out, converting it and then releasing it. Yes. So it is absorbing a portion of the light which is not really efficiently used in photosynthesis yep. to a more efficiently used red one so that we can have that extra carbon that goes into the fruits which gives us more yield and also if it's a leafy crop it will give you bigger leaves. So light is no longer having to be limited to overcome things like sunburn and so it's no longer a limiting factor in production. What sort of yield percentage increase are you expecting to find with the red film? So uh, we did complete a lettuce trial where we found that 10 to 15 percent increase in some cultivars for the plant fresh weight. But we do want to know how that translates into fruit when the carbon is translated to different parts. Okay. And how much the fruit production can be there. So that's why we're trialing the climbing wine crops now. So with lettuce you found a 10 to 15 percent increase in raw leaf production yes. using the red film. Yes. But now you're having a look at the fruit and you're seeing how it affects the fruit. Because there's something really interesting about fruit, isn't it? And that, that is it relies on all sorts of chemicals that are produced by the plant to increase or decrease production of fruit and flowering. And you're finding that the red film's having some impact on that as well, on phytochromes. Yes, of course. So we're looking at uh, different aspects of the plant. We're looking at uh, this particular experiment. So we, we try to understand the change in light. Then we try to understand the change in plant biochemistry, yep. uh, the leaf quality, uh, the fruit quality and of course the yield which is the most important thing. Well I'm really looking forward to seeing the result of this research to back up your already completed and satisfactory lettuce trial. Sure. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with fruit and I think the future of undercover growing is really exciting isn't it with all this new technology yes, coming into the market. Indeed. Good on you mate. Thank you very much for hosting us today. Always a pleasure. Well Chris, <laughs> who could have thought a piece of red plastic could do so many things potentially for an industry. It's both very simple and very complicated at the same time. I like simple and complicated. Yep. Reminds me of myself. <laughs> now how important is it to you that great research facilities like Western Sydney University jump on board and um, actually trial your product when you're going out commercially because you're obviously the chief operating officer it's your job to make this product work in the marketplace how important is the scientific research behind it to it's you? It's incredibly important so major growers they need to see independent trials conducted by places like the Western Sydney University in order to see that the product is doing precisely what it's designed to do. This product promises so much doesn't it i mean we're not only increasing yield but you're also being able to grow fruit out of season without really expensive interventions like nighttime lighting and gas heating and all of those sorts of things so you're cutting down the carbon footprint of production um, and you're also um, presenting a product to market 12 months of the year essentially that's right climate change has to be at the center of most businesses these days yep reducing electricity consumption artificial lighting when you can use a product that passively shifts the spectrum of light and then increase the yield at the same time you're not compromising so growers can achieve more yield and get crops to market and get higher prices for them if people are interested in this today how can they get in contact with you mate we have a website uh, my number's on the website they can contact me directly and yeah well i'll put a link on the web i'll put a link to the website in the description of this video as well so if people want to get in touch with you they can thanks tim um, i really appreciate the time that you've taken you're obviously a very busy man trying to get this out to market and getting onto it um, and you've given us a couple of hours here to discuss what is a truly remarkable product so thank you very much mate thank and all the best Tim. with it thank you very much cheers guys if you like this kind of content and i know you do because you got this far through don't forget to hit the little subscribe button give it a thumbs up there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag you can get onto chris through the description and i do have a patreon see you next week guys